about that for an intro uh good morning good afternoon and to some of you good evening um welcome to our third year of grow with inbound and our first event as hubble digital um some of you may know that we've held grow with inbound offline in central london for the last two years but uh this year we've gone virtual and international enabling us to provide you with great content wherever you are despite the pandemic um, today, you are joining more than 600 marketers, salespeople, and customer service experts, as well as our many friends from other HubSpot partners around the world. Um, so far, we've had nine different sessions uh, with some fantastic hosts and presenters from Asia, Africa, and Europe. And guess what? There are still six more to go uh, to look forward to if you're interested. Uh, we'll be venturing to North America later today. Um, if you've missed them, don't worry. We've got them all recorded. Uh, proceedings kicked off earlier today with our friends at SingSpot in Singapore, who are just finishing their day. And uh, we then moved to our offices in South Africa and then DubSpot in Dublin just before midday. Uh, we'll finish the day off from London by waking up HubSpot HQ on the East Coast in Boston. And the final session will come from the HubSpot office in Chicago. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for taking the time to join us. To say we are thrilled is an understatement. I appreciate it's lunchtime and many of you are undoubtedly hungry, but uh, hopefully you find this presentation and what we have to say very useful and informative. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's, let's get started, shall we? So today we're going to be talking about how to win with topic clusters. And uh, hi, my name's Aaron. I'm senior editor at Hubble Digital, and I'm joined by Jim Beckham, who is our SEO director here at Hubble Digital, and Dean Swanich, who is our HubSpot specialist here at Hubble Digital. Hi, hey guys. I uh, just wanted to go through the agenda really quickly so you have an idea of what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be covering why search engine optimization is important, especially when it comes to modern content strategy how topic clusters can enable you to generate more traffic and leads, um, achieving success with topic clusters, how you implement them using HubSpot, and some of the success stories that we've had with our clients. Um, so first and foremost, I'd like to hand over to Jim now so he can tell us a bit more about the importance of SEO in modern content strategy. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so just, we're gonna go through things quite quickly today, um, but we will be sharing these slides after the presentation. So um, yeah, don't worry too much about if we skip over things um, and there'll be plenty of time for you to catch up afterwards. Um, so first of all, I want to look, um, just make sure we're all on the same page. I'm gonna take us through some um, very quickly why SEO should be part of your marketing strategy and how this ties in to topic clusters. By now, most of us know that search engines have the potential to bring in lots of traffic and potential customers to a website. How much varies um, on your company and your industry, but this data here from HubSpot um, says that it should be making up at least 33% of traffic to your website. At Hubble Digital, for our B2B clients, we actually set ourselves a target of around 50% of non-paid traffic coming from organic. But it's also really important to consider the type of audience you're reaching via search engines. You're reaching people who are actively looking for something and rather than interrupting their day with an ad or social post or email, SEO is reaching them at the point where they're looking uh, for something, a product or service or a solution. And because of this, it means if they find your content, they're more likely to engage with it and convert. It's also worth noting that it's an evergreen source of traffic and leads. Once you've stopped promoting a piece of content and moved on to the next one, it's only really SEO that's going to ensure people keep coming back to your website and converting on that content. So the potential audience is out there, but how do you reach them? Well, it's a simple fact that the higher you rank on search engine results pages, the more likely you are to get clicks from them. Notice here in this graph how much uh, click-through rate drops uh, as you move down the rankings on uh, Google's first page of results. 
And just going to talk briefly about, you know, how Google decides to rank pages um, and other search engines as well. And really they're looking at two main signals. The first is relevance. Um, it's that is defined through the way you use keywords throughout your content and the key areas of it, whether it's the copy, the URLs, the metadata, the headers. Um, but it's also things like internal links from other pages on your site, helping to indicate what the content is about and where related content can be found. The other thing to look at is trust. So this is things like your domain authority, which is based on the quantity and the quality and relevance of links to your site from other websites and demonstrating, tr demonstrating trust that way. Um, it's also about things like content freshness, how much related content you have on a topic and how, how in-depth that content is. This is how you demonstrate expertise. And it's really expertise and trust that engages your users um, and engage users are less likely to bounce. Google can see this and it rewards those pages with higher ranks. But SEO is getting tougher. Um, more people are ticking off the basics. Um, lots of people already know how to find a keyword and write a page for it. And they can also manage the technical health of their website. And you can see this in some of the results pages for some popular keyword targets. So here we've got uh, keywords like what is HubSpot and best accounting software. And you can see in these examples, the titles are all really similar. They've all just taken the keyword, put it in the title and um, job done. What's really, um, we've also got some for what is AI and does inbound marketing really work? And it's actually quite hard to really decide which one to click on um, because there's nothing kind of unique about those. What's really interesting here is all of these are sitting at the bottom of page one. Whereas the, the leaders on these results pages all have something unique about them whether it's offering an unbiased explanation, um, small business focus, um, offering everything you need to know about that topic or um, having experts weigh in on the topic. They're also from websites that are establishing themselves as experts on that topic and they're not just writing a single page about it. And what this means is basically with all this competition is that creating a single page targeting one keyword is no longer really good enough to show that you're an expert on that topic. We need to look at a different strategy here. And that's where topic clusters are the solution. So we've got a video now um, from HubSpot that will just give a very quick overview of um, and a short explanation of what top topic clusters are. Somerville Restaurant. You know, it wasn't long ago that you type some broken search term like this into Google. Now, of course, you simply ask, where should I go for dinner? That's because you assume search engines are smart enough to recognize intent. But does your SEO strategy reflect this changing search behavior? Meet the topic cluster model, an SEO strategy that focuses on topics as opposed to keywords to improve your site's architecture, make it easier for Google to discover related content, and ultimately boost your search engine visibility. Consider how the average website grows. You start with a homepage and a blog. You decide to target a keyword, but learn that there are more than a thousand long tail variations of that term, meaning you're stuck writing post after post to capture the search traffic. And in the end, your site becomes repetitive, bloated, and disorganized. In the topic cluster model, each grouping covers a single topic. You have one larger piece of content, we'll call this the pillar, that broadly outlines the topic, and a defined group of cluster content focused on specific long tail keywords. The pillar links to each cluster page, while the cluster links back to the pillar, each time with the same hyperlinked keyword. That way, when one page performs well, the entire topic cluster gets a boost. It's all about helping web crawlers make connections. Topic clusters signal to Google that there's a semantic relationship between the content, and more importantly, that you're a trusted authority on the topic, worthy of a top spot. So as you can see from that video, it's really all about creating better quality content that is helpful, informative, and more effective at attracting and engaging users. And the rest of today's session is outlining how we have achieved success with topic clusters and how you can do so as well. With that, I'll hand over to Al. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, when you think about content today, you really need to be approaching it from a perspective of how could you answer all the questions that your prospects have and um, achieving success with topic clusters really comes down to your brainstorming and keyword research, which is absolutely integral to achieving success. As topic clusters focus 
focus on building a repository of content around a specific keyword term uh, with the cluster content being assigned long tail variants of that term, you have to think about what topics would be most lucrative to you or your client. So the first step we typically take and we would say is best practice is identifying your area of focus. Is it a product or service you want to focus on? Is it strategy or process or is it an industry issue? Um, typically clients build their topic clusters around products or services or a uh, strategy or process, something that they really excel in and can really demonstrate their expertise on. And um, the aim of the content is to basically tie it back to your service offering and establish how you can help the end user. Then you've got the aim or objective. And um, you could build a pillar page around uh, building awareness, for example. Say your target audience, they have very little understanding about what it is you do. And you could build a topic cluster that way. Or you could build one primarily focused on lead generation or sales, something that really gets new prospects in through the door and enables you to set up uh, potential sales opportunities. And lastly, you need to be thinking about deconstructing your uh, topic cluster, i.e. what makes up the topic? What questions would a prospect ask? What uh, might they be struggling with? What are their pain points, for example? Uh, how have others in your industry addressed the topic? And this will help you to understand in turn what they've missed and where your competitive advantage may be. The idea is to develop a pillar page that does more than anyone else has done and demonstrates your expertise by looking at unique solutions. So once you've done those three areas. The next step really is the keyword research. And we start by expanding our broad topic idea into a large list of keywords. And we'll usually use keyword tools like Google AdWords, Moz, and Answer the Public to find out what people are looking for and if there are any other related terms we should be looking at. We'd also look at similar industry terms to what people might use to describe what they're looking for. And we'll look at other solutions or services that are based on these choice terms. After identifying these main terms, we'll look at prefixes and suffixes that we can add on to that main term to make it more specific and targeted. These might be branded terms, location-based terms, uh, you, and so on. And these essentially allow us to focus on certain regions or aspects of what we're trying to do. We'll also look at uh, question-based keywords that have how or why, because these help us to define intent. Finally, we'll group those keywords and prioritize them based on search volume, competition, and intent. Once we've done that, we then move on to outlining the pillar page and its facets. So um, here's a quick example for you that we've put together. And uh, just say we've got the topic of digital transformation. And the idea is basically to formulate the outline of your pillar page. Think of it as a ebook deconstructed as a web page. And you're trying to answer all the potential questions that a customer might have or a new prospect might have coming onto your page. So if you, for example, we're going with uh, brand awareness for digital transformation and their various understanding of it, you might have these types of cluster content linked to your main pillar page. And what these also do in turn is they naturally forge the subheaders or the segments for your pillar page. And um, these subsections will answer all the questions that they have. And you gradually add these to your pillar page over time to, to expand the topic, but also break down specific areas of it. And it also gives people the opportunity to just click onto the part that they want to read about and find out more. So once you've got your outline complete, let's think about the cluster content. What kind of assets do you want to be adding to that pillar page? Now, when it comes to your cluster content, um, specifically like with, with the digital transformation example, um, the cluster content is really the, the in detail segments of your pillar page, the bits that you link to, and they discuss aspects in more detail. And you can see that these terms here, uh, these ideas here, some of them have the main keyword term in them, but others don't. But what I would say to you is this, that in these examples, um, these are variants of that term or related ideas. So naturally, when people are looking for digital transformation, these are also things that they search for. So things like change management, for example, or optimizing business processes, state of the technology market. And this helps you to further develop your pillar page and cluster content to help nurture people through to a point of purchase. So now that we've spoken really briefly about how you go about building your cluster, um, how do you actually build it in a platform like HubSpot and launch it correctly? And uh, this is where I believe Dean is going to be able to help us a bit more with his expertise. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. So uh, by, by this point in the process, we have our content pieces built out in HubSpot along with each of their target um, keywords. What we're effectively trying to achieve at this point in the process is to sort of assemble the architecture for the topic cluster model which will in turn enable Google's crawlers to make the bi-directional co um, connection between the pillar page and the subtopic content pieces. Um, so we have a, a, a pretty much basic step-by-step um, -step guide that we follow through. It's pretty basic, but it's, um, we've seen some great results from it. So the first thing we do, we did for ourselves um, before we, ro we roll out our own topic cluster model um, and what we do for our clients is to integrate um, HubSpot with Google Search Console. Now, for those of you who don't know what Google Search Console um, is, um, it's a free service from Google that helps you monitor and troubleshoot your website's appearance. 
in their search results. Why do we like to, um, integrating it? Well, it effectively gives us um, insight um, into the data that they hold um, in Google Search Console. And for those of you who don't do your keyword planning and strategy work um, outside of HubSpot um, and use HubSpot, um, HubSpot's sort of uh, metrics to do your keyword research, you'll, you'll be able to get um, oversight over more metrics, such as average uh, position, total impressions, average click-through rates, et cetera. Um, the next step is essentially creating the new topic. So this is when you plug in your broad or short tail keyword um, of your pillar page, you plug it into Google and you connect your pillar page with by now you've already created and you make that connection. And then it's um, essentially um, all about plotting your subtopic content pieces around the pillar page. And by this, you start with your keywords, your longer tail variations or the semantic variations of that um, broad tail keyword. And you plot it around and you attach each of your subtopic content, uh, content pieces to each of the um, uh, uh, keywords. Um, after that, you just need to make sure that the Hub, HubSpot has made that connection. So you need to link from the pillar page to the subtopic piece, but as well as from the subtopic piece back to the pillar page. Basically, once you've done that, you've sort of told Google that you have um, an ecosystem of content pieces around the short uh, around the topic. Um, and then what we do is, as a fourth um, step, we always look back on how our topic um, model is uh, performing. Um, we, we tend to sort of, um, we tend to sort of look at it at every three months, um, because by this time Google sort of has made the, the connection between all the subtopic pieces and, um, enough data has collected on each keyword. Um, and in so doing, whilst you review the topic performance, you'll be able to sort of see how your content pieces are performing. Now, um, one thing to note is you may have a content piece, such as a blog that you've targeted around a specific keyword. Uh, Google may have crawled it and sort of determined that it's relevant to another topic uh, or another keyword. So what you can do is re-optimize that blog piece around that new keyword to bolster the performance of that particular blog and in so doing bolster the performance of the overall ecosystem. Um, and the sixth and final step is um, keep, we, we, you have to keep adding, um, you know, a blog pieces or, or subtopic content pieces to the, to the topic. Um, we found that um, clients have, you know, we've, we've, rolled out a, a, a topic cluster model um, and um, all the hard work went into it. And then they sort of, because their priorities um, or business objectives have changed, they've sort of set it and forget it. Um, and we, we've seen a, um, a drop off in organic performance straight away. So we always advise at least adding, well, adding at least two to three new pieces every month. Um, cool. So that's this sort of step-by-step -step, um, um, guide. Very basic. There are a couple of slides which we'll ping over um, at the end of the session that go into each of those steps in more detail. But we, we basically want to get into the juicy bits, which is the results. So I'm going to run you through um, an example uh, that I worked on with both with Aaron and, and Jim. Um, so this is a tech client and we sort of help them um, compete with the likes of Microsoft. Um, so these guys had already um, mapped out a content plan. Um, around, um, well, the theme we got from them was Modern Workplace. And we realized that, you know, because Modern Workplace is essentially a Microsoft coin term, it will be difficult to compete, compete with the likes of them. So what we suggested was a topic cluster model. Um, so essentially, the first thing we did for these guys in the planning stage was we ran a content strategy workshop. Now, as I mentioned, they had already put together a content plan. So a lot of their ideas for the future was already mapped out. So we kind of had to just find ways in which we can um, uh, improve that. So what we did is we looked at the content audit. Um, we looked at their content audit um, to identify any missing gaps. We looked at their buyer personas um, and their pain points to sort of um, pinpoint um, the pain points that sort of fall within the modern workplace theme. Uh, we looked at competi uh, competitor content. So what, what, what were their competitors doing? Were they answering the questions and how well were they answering the questions? And then finally, we looked at market trends. So what was topical within the modern workplace theme? Uh, what's evergreen, et cetera. From that, we did keyword research. And essentially what we used this, what we used this part of the process to validate the content plan that they'd put together. We found that some of the content plan or some of the content ideas, although it was good on paper, there wasn't any keyword research around it. So we sort of put that to the side and essentially mapped out, um, you know, uh, low hanging fruits. But what we, what we uncovered in our keyword research was that there wasn't really a long tail variation of the term modern workplace. 
Um, as you can see on the left, there wasn't really search volume around any of the longer tail uh, variations. So instead we pivoted to um, targeting um, or pinpointing semantic variations of that keyword or keyword phrases that are very relevant to the theme of modern workplace. And from there, we took our list of target keywords and we mapped it against each um, content idea that they had in their plan. And we went straight into content production and basically drafted and produced all their content pieces, um, taking into account SEO best practice. And then for these guys, because they had never done um, pillar pages before, we created a brand new pillar page template. Um, and I mean, there's, there's some quick wins or best practices to keep in mind when doing this. Uh, but the one thing we found very useful for, the, for these guys was um, the inclusion of multiple conversion points on the, um, on the pillar page. Um, as you know, people who are searching a particular topic may be in different phases of their buyer's journey. So we thought we would um, include uh, conversion points for top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel, just so that we were catering, catering for everyone in their buyer's journey. The other thing we found worked really well was um, a good mix of media. Um, such as imagery, video, pull-out quotes, etc. Um, as Aaron alluded to, your pillar page should be around, I mean, 3,000 words, but there's nothing worse than a block of text, which is hard to digest. So we used um, some, some imagery, some videos, some pull-out quotes to sort of uh, segment the various subtopics of the topic. Um, from there, we basically followed the step-by-step -step guide that I outlined in my earlier slides, and we built out the topic cluster in HubSpot. The one thing I wanted to point is that bi-directional sync between the pillar page, which is at the top, and the subtopic um, content piece, which links back to the pillar page. And once you've made that bi-directional link, your, um, your line in your topic cluster model uh, will go green. The results were pretty, we were pretty um, happy with the results. After a few months, we, we were ranking on page one for Modern Workplace. You, you can see that we feature, uh, the client featured in the featured snippets, which is great. But uh, most importantly, we generated 818 conversions um, from this pillar page or topic cluster model, of which 97 were net new contacts, which is pretty good going. Um, and again, the top performing channel um, is, was organic search. So yeah, we were pretty um, happy uh, with this client. Um, I'm just gonna hand over now to, um, to Jim, who will talk you through um, another client that we found success with. Thanks, Dean. Um, so with this second client, also in the tech industry, we pretty much did the same um, execution, but here we actually launched four topic clusters in one go. And the reasoning behind that was that these guys uh, offer services and support to um, one of Microsoft products, which is Dynamics 365 Business Central. But during our research, we realized that actually a lot of people are still searching for that product in its previous versions, which are Dynamics Nav and Division. And also there was a lot of um, kind of top of funnel research going on around the wider area of enterprise resource planning. So we realized actually with all of these different keywords, there's a slightly different audience and a slightly different offering that the client could provide. And that meant that we needed to really create four different topic clusters rather than just trying to put all our eggs into one basket and um, only produce uh, the Dynamics 365 one. Uh, for instance, Navision hasn't existed since 2005. So a person searching for this might be looking for some technical help with a really um, old bit of software, or they're looking to upgrade and need to know what's changed over the past 15 years. Um, so what we did was we did all the planning in, um, and the writing in December and January, and then we launched this in late February this year. Now, where we're, what we achieved with that is that in just three months, the website started appearing on page one for some of the broad keywords, including some really high volume ones like Enterprise Resource Planning, uh, Microsoft Dynamics Nav and Business Central. Yeah, in these situations, it's competing with Microsoft. Um, so even just getting onto page one against it is a really good result. And we started seeing some, um, you know, traffic and, um, and leads coming through because of that. The uh, graph here is showing also that there's just an overall in increase in visibility, not just for the keywords we were targeting, but related keywords on that topic area. And the really exciting bit is the blue bit of the graph, which is keywords that are ranked on page one. And you can see how that growth has continued since we, we launched those topic clusters, despite all of the impact of things like COVID and the summer holidays. Um, the other really good result with these guys is um, directly uh, comparing their performance against competitors. 
and looking at their visibility and share of voice and the number of keywords on page one. Um, you can see here that for all, for all of these topic uh, related keywords that the competitors just have been very static over the last year, whereas um, our client has been uh, rapidly uh, moving up uh, the rankings uh, for these areas. So not only are we performing better, but I think we're also talking about um, lots of different things related to their potential customers that a lot of these guys are just not um, talking about, particularly looking at the older versions of the product um, and writing content specifically for those audiences. So yeah, we're really happy with those results. And um, I think Aaron's got one final case study just to share as well. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, in this in this final example, um, well, to be fair, no presentation would be complete without plugging ourselves, would it now? But I digest. But um, yeah, in this final example, it's about how we became the go-to resource for B2B content marketing strategy. And um, the execution is very, very similar to uh, what we've spoken about thus far. And um, the thing about this particular page was um, it, it's quite, it's, it's very competitive. Um, it's an established term. Everyone's been using it for ages. And we were trying to compete against the likes of Content Marketing Institute, Neil Patel, Velocity Partners, and several several other well-known and established brands. And um, we'd identified this as one of the topic clusters we want to create because we knew we needed a service area or a provision uh, piece of content that could enable people to understand what it is we do and provide. And all we wanted to do was build awareness. So of course we agreed we agreed the topic, and it's one of four that we'd planned to do. Um, and the purpose of this page was to build awareness, as I said, about our services and position us as an authority. Over time, we wanted to become the go-to resource uh, for co would-be content creators and help them to create good collateral that resonates with their target audience. So we started with our keyword research after identifying the topic we wanted to go for. And uh, given the space was dominated by businesses with content marketing guides and strategies, we had to target a more niche term, which was B2B content marketing strategy. And um, we noticed that it didn't have the, the search volume that we, we really wanted to. So we had to supplement this page with existing content that we had on the topic. And we also targeted several other long tail variants of the main term to actually drive more traffic to this central pillar page. And as a result, it, it's just, it started to perform incredibly well and it's become the go-to resource for many people. And um, on the next slide, you'll, you'll see some of the ideas that we came up with and some of the topics that we attacked in order to get it working as it does. So um, when we were creating the pillar page, essentially we, we broke it down into its constituent parts, the, the main elements of it. And the idea here was to answer as many questions as possible. And this is just part of the, uh, part of the pillar page contents there. The other segment goes into greater detail about it. And um, we want to start from the very beginning with uh, buyer personas, like who are you creating content for, and go all the way down to repurposing and updating your content. And this ensured that we covered all the necessary ground and answered all the possible questions. Here we've got a brief outline of the content plan, and this is essentially like the blogs that we created to support the pillar page. And we, we created four new blogs a week on average uh, to support this pillar page. And all of the blogs were related to the topic of B2B content creation, covering everything from content audits to proving the ROI. And there's, as Dean and Jim have, have, have highlighted in their slides, that there's the bi-directional link between the pillar page and the content, the cluster content and the cluster content and the pillar page. And um. By having this content linked to the pillar page, it allowed us to expand on the main topic of B2B content creation and content strategy and further nurture people to the point where they were like, ah, these guys know what they're talking about. I need their help with content creation. Uh, here you can see uh, how we've built that topic cluster out in HubSpot. Um, there's one red link in there, but that's that's because we've, we've migrated our website and we've just, all the links are still there. We just need to update them once again. But um, we've got more than 20 pieces of cluster content supporting this pillar page at the moment is probably more like 30 plus and um essentially what i would say to you is if you build a topic cluster you always need to be adding to it because there's never a limit on how much value you can provide the end user by creating these articles and every opportunity is uh, every piece of content you create sorry is an opportunity to be found by search engines so um as a, as a result of this activity like we've we've got more than four thousand visits uh, via organic uh, search for for this topic cluster that's the topic cluster alone and that's the top performing channel for it and it just highlights that by choosing the right keywords and targeting the right long tail variants and linking your content you can really drive an incredible amount of traffic to your website um you can see in the graph below um the point at which we migrated our website that traffic started to to slowly go down but um, that's of course to be expected with any kind of uh, migration but on the next slide you'll see how it's quickly recovered and how that pillar page is contributing to the overall website traffic 
Um, in terms of uh, featured snippets and things that we own as a result of this pillar page, um, on the left hand side, that's that's one thing that we we own. We we are first we are the first result on Google Desktop for the term B two B content marketing strategy. And um, there are also several other terms like how to create a, a B2B content marketing strategy and what is a B2B content marketing strategy that we also rank on the first page for. Now, this is the slide where you can really see how all of this has contributed to our overall website traffic. Um, overall, we've got more than 15,000 visits to our website. You can see the migration points at which the traffic's gone down, but then quickly recovered as a result of the content that we're creating. We've increased uh, our content uh, creation topic cluster content production to two to three posts a week. And we've got more than six posts with more than 1,000 views last quarter and one post with 10,000 views this quarter. And 66% of our total traffic in August was organic alone. And essentially we've mitigated the impact of two website migrations by following this process. So takeaways and best practice, things that you can just utilize right now and implement very effectively. Well, SEO is an important marketing channel, but um, it's getting more competitive each year. Uh, establish you as a thought leader in the eyes of your prospects and search engines. A structured approach that involves forward planning will lead to better decision making and well researched content, and that's what topic clusters provide for you. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, you have to realize it's a long term strategy, but has long lasting results. It will take time to build momentum, but it will really deliver for you. And quickly, this is just our tried and tested process for the planning and the execution of, of, of your pillar page. And if you follow these steps uh, one by one, you should reach a point where you're able to create pillar pages that are very successful and enable you to win big when it comes to SEO. All in all, better content means more traffic, more engaged users, more leads, and ultimately what we all want, more business. Thank you very much for um, joining this session. Um, I just wanted to actually let me stop sharing a moment. Um, just one more thing to note. Um, we're, we're also giving away um, some Apple AirPods Pro and um, some of you may be aware of this competition already and it's simple enough to enter. Um, just tell us your, your key takeaway from the last session and post it uh, with a picture if you like onto LinkedIn with the hashtag uh, grow20. And, um, We'll, we'll select one of these pictures of posts at random. So you could be a lucky winner and proud owner of these amazing Apple AirPods Pro. And uh, we'll mail them out to you free of charge. And you can see that we actually do do it because there's two happy, happy recipients on the right-hand side there. Um, in terms of the next sessions that you can potentially join, um, we've got HubSpot's Chief People Officer, Katie Burke, joining our Chief People Officer, Jessica Packer, to discuss how to be the world's best place to work and best practices around recruitment and culture, which is really going to be an interesting one to join. And we've also got Tyler Lassard from Vidyard, and he's going to be talking about how to use video to create a friction-free buying experience. Um, You've been a wonderful audience. Um, I don't know if we've got time for questions. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. We do um, have two questions, Aaron, that I think we should just sure. elaborate on. Um, sure. Please bear with us, guys. And um, thank you very much for staying on the line. Uh, we've got two really good questions. Uh, the first one was from Niraj. Um, in the, uh, the, qu the question was, in the old content, how do you incorporate the new keywords? So first off, if you have old content um, that you produced um, a couple of months ago, all, even if it's a year ago, if it's relevant to the topic, we definitely recommend using it. What we have done in the past is we've identified a whole bunch of blogs or content, any content piece, so on-demand webinars, uh, landing pages, eBooks, etc., And we've basically put them on a list and we've repurposed them. So we add them to the content plan that we are going to be doing keyword research around and we find a relevant keyword that we can slot into those blogs. We wouldn't recommend just slotting in um, um, a keyword into the blog without um, all the content piece without um, repurposing it. Otherwise, it's just going to look a bit weird and read. Well, you, you can definitely just see that it's, um, you know, keyword stuffing. Um, um, we have another great question from Fiona. Uh, the question was, how many pillar pages would you recommend a business should create? Short answer, the more the merrier. Um, but obviously, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. So depending on your resource, um, I mean, the more the merrier, really. Um, we've, as, as Jim alluded to in one of his success stories, we rolled out four for a client, uh, but that was because we had a lot of capacity on our team and um, the client had a lot of capacity on their side to feed us with the information. But we wouldn't want to, you know, spread your resource too thin. We would rather recommend, well, we, we recommend um, rolling out one full-on topic cluster with at least 10 to 20 subtopic pieces. 
and there from there um, go on to your second and your third um, and brownie points for if you can make the connection between three different pillar pages and topic clusters because remember as soon as one topic a subtopic piece boosts it boosts the performance of that ecosystem as soon as that ecosystem boosts um, or improves it improves the overall um, organic performance of the wider um, ecosystem and in so doing from that it sort of uh, boosts the organic performance of your um, overall domain. I think just to elaborate on on what Dean said as well um, it would only be one pillar page per kind of topic area and I guess we wouldn't want to go too granular where you're targeting quite long tail um, very specific keywords with your pillar page. The idea really is that you're using your pillar page to go for these really high competition, harder to get, it's gonna require multiple bits of content to establish you as an expert. Um, and it's really that's kind of the long-term goal is to get your, your, your pillar page up there. Um, the other great thing about pillar pages is they should always be kind of um, evolving as you create new bits of cluster content, go back, look at your pillar page, can you slot in an extra section, an extra paragraph summarizing what that blog post or that ebook is about um, and expanding your pillar page further. Um, so it becomes this like hub of information basically for somebody wanting to start at the beginning, get to understand the topic um, and then find more detailed information on the specific area they're most interested in. Awesome. So I, I think, think that kind of links into one other question we've got from Shane, which is mm. when you have multiple topic cluster options, is it best to only focus on one or two at a time? I think, yeah, as Dean said, it comes down to capacity. Um, we would rather see, you know, one really effective topic cluster being created rather than having, you know, 10 <laughs> running the kind of ineffective ones with very little supporting content. Cool. I think that is all the questions, unless there are any more. Doesn't, doesn't look like doesn't it. Doesn't look like it. But um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everyone who's, who's joined and stayed with us thus far. I appreciate it. it's lunchtime and we're all very hungry, I know. Um, but you've been a wonderful audience. Um, yeah, if you've, if you've got time, and as Matt said, um, there are sessions starting in 51 minutes, I believe now, where you've got a Tyler Lassard, VP of Vid, uh, Marketing at Vidyard, and you've got Katie Burke and Jess Packer, um, HubSpot's uh, chief people officer and our chief people officer respectively talking about creating the best workplace in the world. Um, you've been a great audience. Thanks again and have a great day. Thanks guys.